Hello again everyone, and welcome to another Scratch video. In this video, we're going to be making a maze game. And as you can see, I just have the Scratch home screen pulled up. I'm going to click this Create button, and if you want to follow along and make this game as I make it, that's perfectly fine. Because we're going to make it from the very beginning, starting from, well, Scratch. So, we start with just a Scratch cat here, and nothing else. And the first thing that we need to do is draw our maze. So I'm going to click on the stage icon down here. I'm going to go to my backdrops. And there are two schools of thought when you make these mazes. You can either use this line tool. You can choose your outline color. And I recommend doing a color other than black because some of the sprites are outlined in black, like you see this scratch cat is even. And sometimes that messes up when you touch the walls with a sprite that has the same color as the wall color. Um, it will not recognize the difference in color sometimes, and that will be important later, which you'll see in a few minutes. So, you can use this line tool, whatever color you want, and you can make these nice, straight, perfectly, you know, 90 degree angles and stuff like that, and you can build this really cool maze, make it really intricate, or you can do what I like to do, which is to use the paint bucket tool, or the paint brush tool. Pick a color and make a squiggle maze. And I like the squiggle mazes better because one, I'm not very patient to be able to draw all those lines, and two, they just kind of look fun. So I'm going to erase both of these, and I'm going to draw my version of my squiggle maze. You draw whatever version of your maze that you want, whether you want to do straight lines, squiggles, combination, however you want to do it. And I'm going to pause the video. When I restart, I will have mine drawn and we'll pick up from there. If you want to pause this video to draw yours, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I have my maze more or less drawn, and now what I need to do is I need to fill in the inside and the outside of the maze so that it's easier to tell where the paths are and where the boundaries are and everything like that. So to do that, I'll use my fill bucket tool. I'm going to make the inside of my maze kind of a green, like a grassy green, and I'm going to need to click the convert to bitmap button probably in order to get it to fill in like this. And then I'll make the outside of my maze a nice dark blue. Maybe that's supposed to be water, for example. And there we go. So I have my nice maze. It's all nice and colorful, and it's really easy to tell now where I'm supposed to be walking versus where I'm supposed to be avoiding. Speaking of walking, though, our next task is to get Scratch Cat to be able to walk. So. There are several ways that we can do this. I'm only going to show you one in this video, but I'll probably make a video at some point on sprite motion, and I'll show a couple ways in that video. But we're going to click on our Scratch Cat, or whatever sprite you have. If you chose a different sprite, that's fine. We'll go to Code, and we're going to go to our Events. We're going to grab a When the Green Flag Clicked. Now, you'll notice that my Scratch Cat is a little too big to fit through this maze. So to fix that, I'm going to need to go to his size right here, and I'm going to go ahead and change it. I'm going to try about 40. Eh, it's a, still a little bit too big, so I'll try about 30. And it looks like that's going to be okay. I might have to shrink it down a little bit more to get through some of these little narrow places, so I'll go to something like 25. And you'll need to do this with your sprite as well. And go ahead and then drag your sprite to the beginning of your mix. Once you do that, go to Motion, and grab this block that says go to X, and then some number, Y, some number. Your numbers are going to probably be different than mine, and that's totally fine. So don't copy my numbers, because my Scratch Cat is going to be in a different position than yours. Once you have those, go back to your events, and grab four of these ones that say Win Space Key Pressed. And I'm going to put them in kind of like a plus arrangement like this, or a diamond. And I'm going to change them by clicking this drop down arrow to say up arrow for my up, down arrow for the one on the bottom, right arrow for the one on the right, and left arrow for the one on the left. And to make our scratch cap move, we'll go back to motions, and we're going to scroll down until we find the blocks that say change x by 10 and change y by 10. Now, if you've done a math class before and you've talked about the coordinate plane, you know that your x and y coordinates are your left and right, 
or sorry, your x coordinates are your left and right, and your y coordinates are your up and down. So we're going to use our x coordinates to make scratch cut move left and right. So if I go change x by 10, and I press my right arrow, then my scratch cut is going to move right by 10 pixels. Now, if I do that same change x by 10 on my left arrow, and I press my left arrow, and I promise I'm pressing my left arrow here, he still moves right. So in order to get him to move left, we actually have to change this to say minus 10. So that instead of adding 10 pixels to our x, we are subtracting 10 pixels from our x. And now Scratch Cat can move left. Same thing with our up and down, except we're going to use change y by 10 and change y by minus 10. So now Scratch Cat can go up, down, left, and right. But you will notice that Scratch Cat can also just pass through the walls and cheat. And that's not really great for our game. So we need to find a couple of ways to make Scratch Cat respect these walls. There are two ways that I will show you how to do this, and you can choose whatever way you want to do for your project. The first way is going to use four if-then statements from control. And the way an if-then statement works is we're going to put some code or some block in this little diamond right here. And if that happens, whatever we put in this little diamond, then it will run the code below this and whatever we put in this little alligator mouth. So we're going to go to our sensing and we're going to check if Scratch Cat is touching the color of our walls. To do that, we'll use this touching color block and you can go ahead and put it in all four of your if thens. And your touching color block will be a, probably a different color in this little bubble than mine. It just picks a random color every time. So don't worry if yours is completely different. To get it to be your wall color though, instead of just sort of guessing and hoping to find the exact color, what you'll do is you'll click this button right here with this little eyedropper, and you're gonna hover over your screen over here. You'll notice that this little magnifying glass will change, the rim uh, on the outside will change to match whatever color, and you're going to just select your wall color and do that for all four. So just like that. And now to get Scratch Cat to stop at the walls, what we'll do is we'll go back to motion, and for each motion block here, we're just going to put the opposite one in the if-then. So in other words, if we change y by 10, if it's already touching the color brown, it's going to change y by minus 10, so that it will appear to not move at all. Same thing with our x as well. And just make sure that you are really careful not to mix and match your x's and y's. So if this says change x by 10, this should also be change x by 10. And same with the y's. So now when we move our scratch cat, if I try to move him down or up, you'll notice that the down arrow right now is kind of flashing yellow. I'm pressing the down arrow, but it's not actually letting me go down. Same with the up arrow now. So that's one way to get Scratch Cat to not be able to move through the walls. There's another way to do it that's a little bit more uh, intense. It's a little bit trickier uh, for your player because instead of just stopping Scratch Cat if he hits a wall, it's actually going to jump him back to the start of the maze. So to do that, I'm gonna actually take off all of these if-thens and just kind of stack them up over here out of the way. You don't have to delete them, you can just stack them up, and that way you can always go back and replace them later. And we're going to add some code to our win the green flag clicked code right here. We're going to go to control, grab a forever loop, and an if then, and put it inside that forever. The reason we need a forever is because we're going to be always checking in this version of the code if it's touching this brown wall. Whereas in our other codes, we didn't have to always check, we only checked if we pressed one of our arrow keys. So, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, and we'll grab a touching color block, we're gonna change it to match the color of our walls, 
But this time, instead of doing a change x or a change y, we are going to instead go back to motion and grab a go to block again, and it should be the same numbers as the one up at the top here, so that if it touches the wall color, it should zap you back to the start of the maze. And like I say, this makes your maze a little bit harder because if you mess up once, you have to start all the way over. So whichever version of that you prefer, either way works and either way uses these if-then blocks, which is what the maze is really good for. So the last thing that we'll do, once you have whichever version of your walls that you want to do, is we're going to click on our backdrops again. We'll click on our backdrop with our paintbrush right here. And you're going to decide where your finish line is and go ahead and draw in a finish line. And I'm going to make mine kind of red so it's really easy to see. I'm going to up the thickness of a line so it's really easy to see. And I'll just draw it right down here. Then once I have my finish line drawn, I'm going to click on my scratch cat again, click on his code. I should see all the code that I just did. And if you have not already added a forever block underneath your when the green flag clicked, go ahead and do that now because we're going to need that forever block to test uh, when we touch our finish line. So once you have that forever block underneath your when the green flag clicked, go ahead and add an if then statement. And just like before, we're going to go to a touching color block. We are going to change it. This time, instead of the wall color, we're going to change it to the finish line color. And in order to have our finish line do something, we're going to grab either a looks or a sound or whatever you prefer to do. But I'm going to just do a looks block that says I win whenever you touch your red finish line. So if I drag my scratch cut over here just to test and I walk over the finish line, it should say I win. Now, you'll notice that this only is supposed to say I win for two seconds, but Scratch Cat is still saying it. And that's because this I win is inside this forever loop. So as long as the program is running, it's going to say I win for two seconds, and then it goes back up to here and goes, okay, we're still in a forever loop, so keep saying I win. And it's going to keep saying I win until either you press this red stop sign, or the other way to do it would be to go to your control blocks, scroll all the way down until you find a stop block. It should say stop all. Make sure to put it right underneath this I win. So it should be touching the purple block. And now when you walk over there, it should say I win for two seconds and then it will stop. And you can still move Scratch Cat, but all the rest of the scripts will stop. So your wall scripts won't work or anything like that. And if you want the program to work again, you have to press the green flag to reset the maze. So either way, um, that, is, that is the way that I would end this program. I'm going to make a few videos in the future for how to make a second level or how to add levels to your maze game. I'll also make a video on adding an enemy to your maze game to make it even harder. And I might think of a couple other things that we can do with the maze game between now and then too. But for now, this is enough for one video, I don't want it to get too long, so I hope you enjoy making your maze, and I will see you next time.